Hello there, how's it going? It's me, Amanda, and I'm here with another video here with kick ass with both feet. That's what I'm calling my shit, <laughs> my coaching practice, my whatever. Um, and I come in here into your YouTubes with three videos a week. And on Saturdays, I talk on a theme and this month's theme is rigorous honesty. And today I just wanted to do a quickie. Um, these can get long, but I want to let you know that this one's going to be Hopefully no more than five, definitely no more than 10. We'll see how it goes. I don't plan these out super, super a lot. <laughs> that was an awkward sentence. I'm tired, again, went on a really awesome hike this morning and it was super fun and tiring um, and great. And so now it's just kind of a gray, rainy afternoon and I'm a little sleepy, but I will do my best to make sense today. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about what I think about when I think about rigorous honesty. Um, I think a lot of times people can be like, well, I don't outright lie to people and I don't fucking outright steal. So why do I need to care about rigorous honesty? And what's this rigorous bit? So today I'm focusing on the honesty that I'm talking about and what I focus on mostly in my life. It started to become like a value, like a core value of mine when I got sober a little over six years ago. And I got sober through AA and it says in our book, we have a text, you know, the big book. And uh, it talks about... You have to, like the only way that this will work, essentially, it can work for anyone, no matter how far gone one is, however fucked up they've been, however drunk they got, however many drugs they did, this program will work, but it requires rigorous honesty and a willingness to be completely honest about everything all the time. And so when I came in, one of the things, and this is kind of delusional for sure, but I always kind of prided myself about being what I called an ethical junkie or an ethical whatever I was out there in the world, using drugs and alcohol for 16 years. Um, I had my moments, you know, where I was like a squatter train hopper kid and justified stealing from large department stores because we needed to eat. And, um, you know, I only stole from my dad once because I needed to, you know, it was shady, but I knew a lot of people who were like straight up robbing people, like breaking into houses or stealing like you couldn't have them in your house or your room or near you because as soon as they left something would be missing and I wasn't like that and I tried really hard and I always had this code of ethics even though today I still live by a higher one but back then I was like well I don't steal from friends I don't steal from local businesses like I had this thing that I thought made me honest right <laughs> so I got sober and I looked at that and I was like okay cool well that's easy I don't need to steal anymore because I'm not homeless and I don't need and I wouldn't anyways and you know I trust in God now and so I'll you know, I'll, I'll live a different way. Easy. I didn't think of myself as a big thief or whatever, but adopting this idea of rigorous honesty as just a personal code has opened up this whole new world of places where I was totally lying about all kinds of stuff and mostly to myself. And I've, I've learned to explore the concept of rigorous honesty in a way that is a little bit more nuanced a little bit deeper and ultimately way more satisfying. Like, yeah, I don't go rob stores, but I'm lying to myself about what I want to do for a living or how I feel in this relationship. And so today I just want to invite you to think about where you could be more honest, even if you already think of yourself as an overall honest person. You're an upright, upstanding citizen and you'd never dream of stealing from someone or, so or a store or something. But are there areas where you're totally lying to yourself about what makes you happy or what doesn't make you happy? Um, just because I got sober didn't mean I still had a lot of fucked up habits that I had to work on. And, and those always started with rigorous honesty. And this is challenging because, as I've said before, as you've heard before, I didn't invent this saying, but the truth, this is about getting to the truth, right? And living in truth and living in integrity and living in love. And one of the characteristics of truth, unfortunately, if we've been out of alignment with it for a long time, is that it's initially very painful to look at or very frustrating or infuriating. And we spend a lot of time and we have a lot of sneaky ways of not looking at it and avoiding it. And so when I stopped doing drugs and alcohol, I still had numbing behaviors, right? Like being online too much or overeating. And I'm a super anti-diet, intuitive eating health at every size person. So when I talk about overeating, I'm not saying it in a judgmental way, but just for me, areas of my life where I was specifically using food to cope with an emotion. And again, like I'm not taking a stand around, it's totally wrong to emotionally eat all the time, like food can be fun and whatever. But the way I was using it for me felt um, off, like it didn't feel like the way I wanted to keep eating and 
So being able to be rigorous, rigorously honest with that stuff and like get that kind of shit in alignment. And I feel like it even shows up with, um, questioning myself. Like I'm a coach and I'm all about like looking at our thoughts and how they're creating our feelings. And part of what I teach and what I practice for myself and what has been revolutionary in my life is being able to sit with emotions. And to me, that's a piece of this, like telling the truth, even if just to myself about what I'm really feeling about this. And it's about, we do this and sometimes it calls us, I think sometimes why we avoid it is because it often calls for action. It calls for us to change calls for us to make new choices and maybe stop doing one thing and start doing another. And, and that's hard. Like our brains don't want to do that. Our brains try to keep us like safe in the cave, right? Like they don't want anything new, even if it's going to serve us, even if it's going to help us grow, you know, move us forward somehow, we still try to avoid it. So I just wanted to throw that out there for your consideration for the week. Um, a way of looking at rigorous honesty where you don't just dismiss it because you're like, yeah, well, I don't fucking steal and I don't lie. But there are probably, I'm guessing, if you're anything like me, because I still have to work on this every day, there are still sneaky ways that we might want to lie to ourselves. And I would just encourage you to look at that. And it can be scary because sometimes it means it's time for me to leave this job that I thought I was all about, or it's time for me to finish my degree, or it's time for me to end this relationship, or it's time for me to call this person that I haven't talked to in a long time. Um, If we let ourselves tell that kind of truth... It can be scary, but I promise on the other side of that kind of shit, like truth with the capital T, which I think is rooted in love, um, it's always going to be for our best eventually. So for this week, I just encourage you to consider it and ask yourself, like, are there areas where I'm lying to myself? Are there areas where I can be in more integrity in my life? What's not working? What is? And how can I tell even more truth about that to be rigorously honest? And at first it felt like a chore, but now it feels like this badge of honor. Like I strive for rigorous honesty and it feels great. So have a lovely weekend and I will be back Tuesday with um, Try It Tuesday or your weekly tit. And if you don't know what that is, come back Tuesday and find out. Okay, take care. Thanks for watching. Oh, and hey, if you want to work with me one-on-one, I have some uh, individual coaching spots available. Please send me an email if you're interested. And if you want to do a free consultation call, I would love that. Um, It's You can email me for more information at amandagoldmakesart at gmail.com. I'm done now. All right. Take care. Bye.